I just want to leave a thought with you. You know, not everybody appreciates us. Sometimes it worries us. We want to be appreciated. But I've got good news. God appreciates you. Not only that, He loves you. <laughs> he gave His only begotten Son to die for you. In order to save you, you are so precious in His sight. Welcome to one of the most frequently discussed subjects, Noah's Ark and the Flood. Do you think it was real? Or do you think it's just a myth with some moral lessons? Come with me to Colange in Germany. I was on my way to this beautiful cathedral when I came across something amazing. Here it is. And this is what the newspaper had to say. Let me read it to you. Noah's Ark has docked in Colange, Europe's first floating amusement park with a biblical theme has opened its gangway in Colange. Visitors can test their knowledge of the Bible while getting cozy with life-size models of giraffes and other fuzzy fellows. You know, I was surprised that in a secular country where the Bible is still appreciated. It is a stately vessel floating on the Rhine River and somehow it looks vaguely familiar. Let me show you something I found inside. The Ark of Noah. This Ark that you are now visiting is half the size of the original one. This Ark is 70 meters long 9 meters wide and 13 meters high. The height is almost equal to the original arc. It was 15 meters high, 25 meters wide and 150 meters long. Plumbing one's memory. It does indeed resemble illustrations from childhood picture books about the Bible. That's just what Dutch television entertainer and puppeteer Art Peters was aiming for. Nearly a year ago, he purchased this model of Noah's Ark, turning it into a kind of museum and amusement park to teach people more about the Holy Scripture. I salute a man like this because there is no other book like the Bible. It tells me how to get to heaven and stay out of problems. The Bible is an interesting book, he says, even for people who have never read it, he observed. Everyone should be familiar with its stories. I agree with him. Colange is the first station abroad for the Ark, having docked only at Dutch ports until now. When visitors board the ship, the first thing they receive is a questionnaire where they can test their knowledge of the Bible. Wooden stuffed giraffes. True to the story of the book of Genesis which saw Noah built an ark to save himself, his family and the animals of the world during the great flood. This museum ship is home to many an animal though the majority of them are stuffed. Look at this. Man, I love the giraffes. <laughs> so friendly. Some more pictures. So <clears throat> I've spent quite a while here with my daughter just enjoying this visit with a biblical background. The ship is also a four-story abode for many scenes from the Old Testament and the New Testament, including Adam and Eve in paradise, as you can see here. Wooden models created by Czech sculptor Mikhala Bartonova are beautifully crafted. Ark goers can also sit down in confession booths to reveal their secrets. Open to everyone. Having opened in Cologne in July with the help of German singer Nina Hagen, the show has already seen a wide range of visitors. Now listen to this. Jews, Hindus, 
Buddhists, Muslims, as well as Christians have made their way on board since then. Exposure to the story of the Bible. I greet these people. Do you recognize some of these names? In the middle you have a David and Goliath. In the David and Goliath setting, visitors can pick up a slingshot like the young future king of Israel to slay the giant Philistine warrior. I hope when people visit here, they will go back to the Bible and read the marvelous stories. Peters, whose work as a filmmaker and producer of children's television shows, has taken him to Arab countries, particularly likes talking with the Muslim ark visitors. Noah's tale is also present in other religions, he noted. I've met Muslims who know the story better than Christians. Once visitors want to settle down after exploring, they can step down into the bowels of the ship. Here they can read the original story of Noah and, Noah and the Ark in Bibles provided by the German Bible Society. They're doing a great work. This is my wish for you, my dear friend looking at the story of Noah and learn some very important and serious lessons. Protestant pastor Matthias Bunhofer from Bonn, and I was doing lectures there, for his part found the exhibition interesting, but noted that some of the theological subtleties are missing and much does not correspond with what's actually in the Bible. Well, this is an effort. Still, it's impressive for young people and a good way for them to get a glimpse of the Christian traditions and culture, he added. The root of good and evil is mysteriously surrounded by lead and nails and grows throughout the entire ship and you will see its influence in every story. For where man wants to do good, evil is also present. I like this. After our visit to the model of Noah's Ark, I thought of the many people who visited the floating museum. Did the story of Noah and the Ark become a great reality to them? Some of them believed. Others were skeptic. Come with me to the British Museum where I found the Gilgamesh epic. It is the story of the worldwide flood. The main player is not Noah, but someone by the name of Utna Pishtum. Listen to the BBC News on Tuesday, the 29th of April, 2003. Uh, this is uh, history. But I, I, loved, I, I appreciated what I read here. Gilgamesh tomb believed found. I was so excited. Archaeologists in Iraq believe they may have found the lost tomb of King Gilgamesh, the subject of the oldest book in history. It was found, they said, at the ancient Sumerian site of Uruk, Biblical Eric. And this is exactly where I'm standing right now, doing a lecture that was filmed. What did the archaeologists discover during the excavations at Nineveh? Yo, oh, <laughs> this is another story of uh, the Syrian king uh, Ashur Banipal. He had a huge library here in Nineveh and they discovered the library, clay tablets by the thousands. Uh, who collected them? And this was King Ashur Banipa. Who deciphered the Gilgamesh epic which was found here? A man called George Smith from the British Museum. Any other ancient references to a worldwide flood except the Babylonian clay tablets? In Hindu mythology, texts such as the Satapate 
a Brahmana and the Puranas tell the story of a great flood. Matsya, avatar of Vishnu, warns the first man. This is what the book says. Manu, sounds like man, Adam, of the impending flood and also advises him to build a giant boat. In my research, I was so happy when I came across this. Matsya Avatara and Lord Vishnu pulls Manu's boat after having defeated the demon. Stories of a universal flood can be found all over the world and you can go to the internet and discover it for yourselves. There are many sources which one can consult on Noah, the Ark and the Flood. Oh, uh, this one, Gilgamesh Epic is one. Different uh, civilizations has got something to say. Uh, and uh, of course, evolution. Now, which of them are authentic? You know, we have to, to make choices in life. And without facts, how can you make a choice? Going on feeling is not always safe. Two great uh, books that I've read is the one of uh, Fluffy's Josephus and the other one, Patriarchs and Prophets, by the greatest female author ever to live and to write. Brilliant books, I recommend them. The most proven, reliable, inspired source, the Bible. I've been studying this book in the light of archaeology for many years. It is a fantastic book. And its author is God. It is inspired. And the, the writings of Moses, especially the book of Genesis, oh, it's, it's a wealth of ancient gems. I recommend the book of Genesis. This plane will take us across Turkey, right across the great, it's a, it's a big country, to the Ararat Mountains. We were going to do research on the Ark and of Noah. This is the famous Mount Ararat from our hotel window at Dogobayazit in Turkey. My daughter and I visited an interesting and some interesting sites uh, near the famous Mount Ararat. Now my daughter and the guide just dragged me up here, I'm an old man. <laughs> but can you see right at the blue, there's some rock and there's an opening. You can also see a little bit of blue there. We went there. Oh. Man, I was so scared. For the first time, I realized that this old man <laughs> must be very careful where he goes. Loretta says, no trace of an arc formation. We were looking for arc formations. Let's look a little further. Ah, can you see what I see? Here you see something that looks like a boat. I remember when this was discovered for the first time by a spy plane. There was great sensation and everybody cried, this is the Ark of Noah. But when you make a statement, you've got many critics. <laughs> People all over the world were excited when, they, when, they, when this was found. And many believed that this is the remnant of the Ark of Noah. It looks just like a ship, almost like I think the ship of Noah. After examining the claims that this was the ark, we came to the conclusion that this is just a geological phenomenon. There are many scholars who reject the claim that this was the ark. And uh, you can check my research on YouTube, François Duplessis, and uh, digging up the past and you'll get some more info there.
Besides visiting many amazing archaeological sites, we will also visit a mountain called Ucht Azar in uh, Armenia, meaning the covenant in Armenian language, the Ark of the Covenant. This sounds very interesting. Let's go to the highest authority on this subject. Who do you think is he? Jesus. Jesus who created the world. And ask him to tell us something about Noah and the flood. He's talking of his second coming. The good news, the blessed hope. And he writes, But of that day and hour, no one knows. Not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, uh, look at this, this verb, were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. So if you want to know what the coming of the Son of Man would be like, you have to study the story of Noah and the flood. This is recommended by Jesus. So I'm going to share a little bit of it. For as the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking. This is in the excessive mode. Marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. So here is a wicked generation. There's a man called Noah and there's an ark. And this is what Jesus confirms. It is not mythical, it is real. And did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, we call this eschatology. Uh, Jesus uses the flood story to point us to a greater catastrophe at the end. The one explains the greater one that's coming. So archaeology and eschatology, eschatology uh, 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 make the study of the flood account a very serious matter. You know, I don't want to get lost. I want to be in heaven one day to study the character of God. I want to see his glory, his character. Now you're looking at sites uh, where Noah related stuff were believed or discovered. Look at all the places. That's the, the, the brown. First crime seen in history. Who could they be? In the days of Noah, a double curse rested upon the earth because of Adam's transgression and of the murder committed by Cain. How big is that curse right now? Does moral decay have an effect on nature? Uh, a question to, to think of. It is at the time of the national apostasy when Acting on the policy of Satan, he is involved, by the way, in all the disasters that we have on this planet. The rulers of the land will rank themselves on the side of the man of sin. Can you already see it? It is then the measure of guilt is full. You know, there's a climax to everything in life. The national apostasy, and you see it all over is the signal for national ruin. A time of trouble is coming upon this planet that no pen can describe. The tallest man you've ever seen? Look at this tall man. In my overseas travels, I saw some giants. And maybe you've seen some. There were many giants, men of great stature and strength, renowned for wisdom, skillful in devising the most cunning and wonderful works, 
but their guilt in giving loose rein to iniquity was in proportion to their skill and mental ability. Now we're looking at the antediluvians, and this is what I discovered about them. The most wicked generation ever to live. Imagine a society with millions upon millions upon millions of criminals refining their acts of violence during their lifespan of almost a thousand years. Man, these criminals became worse and worse and more dangerous and they had time to do it, almost a thousand years. How do you explain a planet full of criminals aging almost a thousand years? It was a mess. Men put God out of their knowledge and worship the creatures of their own imagination. And as a result, they became more and more debased. You can see some of the oldest deities in our large museums. Can people become so base as to worship the work of their own hands? Our oh, egocentrism is such a curse. Our oh, God needs humble people like Jesus. Arrogance is revolting. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination, every thought of the brain, that every imagination of the thoughts of the heart was only evil continually. A planet populated with people who are constantly evil and planning evil. I hope you appreciate what the antediluvians looked like. Here we have a profile from the Bible of them. The earth was also corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Violence. Nobody was safe. Your evaluation of the judge who never convicts rapists, thieves, abusers, murderers, where will it end? And this is the problem in, in my country, for instance. Uh, the perpetrators are never sent to jail. And if you don't have a, a justice system meeting out punishment, you have chaos. And this was the case of the people before the flood, the antediluvians. Polygamy had been early introduced in the antediluvians, contrary to the divine arrangement at the beginning. It was not Adam and Steve, it was Adam and Eve. The Lord gave to Adam one wife, showing his order in that respect. This is from God the designer of human humans. Neither the marriage relation nor the rights of property were respected. Respect, respected. Can you imagine a society like this? They're going to, to demise themselves. Whoever coveted the wives or the possessions of his neighbor took them by force and men exulted in their deeds of violence. Can you imagine living in those days? You are never sure of the safety of your property and your loved ones. And now, would the judge of the universe allow this to go on ad infinitum? How long will he tolerate this? This was not his plan for people. The, 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 the Ten Commandments says, Worship God, love Him, and the last six commandments is how to treat your neighbor. And if you don't do it, you're in a mess. What about the animals? Originally, God prescribed a plant-based diet. Lions and predators all ate a plant diet. 
How long did they continue this practice? There's a modern scene of slaughtering, slaughtering animals. The antediluvians delighted in destroying the life of animals. They got so wicked. And the use of flesh food rendered them still more cruel and bloodthirsty until they came to regard human life with astonishing indifference. Did you get the message? We will continue the study of the conditions before the deluge. You will be surprised at the patience of God with his wicked creatures. My prayer for you is to prepare for the last catastrophe that is coming very soon. As it was in the days of Noah, says Jesus. So it will be at the end of time. This is the end of life on this planet as you see it today. God is not going to tolerate it much longer. This planet is getting so wicked that if God does not destroy it soon, he will have to apologize to the antediluvians. If you need a little help with a weakness in your life, please consult the Creator because He is also the Recreator. Father in Heaven, we've begun a study of what happened before the Flood. And I pray you, Lord, help us to realize the seriousness of the Bible story and the history of the destruction of this planet. And if there's something in our hearts, maybe bitterness, unforgiving spirit, jealousy, whatever, please, you are not only the creator, but also the recreator. Recreate us with a clean heart. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you for watching this presentation. To subscribe to our channel, click here, then click the bell to get notifications. For the next presentation, click here. See you next time.